Hey there folks. Now a lot of you know that I'm from Washington State and right here is our state fishing regulations pamphlet. It is 150 pages of general fishing regulations for freshwater and saltwater as well as special regulations for virtually every single river system and lake in the state is all published in here as well as different marine zones throughout uh, the state's marine waters that it manages. Now for folks coming from interior states uh, this can be pretty overwhelming. Um, I grew up in Kansas. I think our state fishing regulations pamphlet is probably like 20 pages or something like that. And even like in states that have complex saltwater and freshwater environments like in Florida, uh, their pamphlet is still just half of the length that this one is. And this is in part because we have a lot of endangered species that have to be managed for and they divide up all of these river systems and lakes to address certain management issues. And so, yeah, it makes it really challenging to try and provide a maximal opportunity while keeping the regulations simple. But a lot of people do complain that it's overly complex. I think adding to this complexity is the fact that a lot of these regulations change mid-season. And so we have a secondary level of emergency regulations, which are constantly going into effect, which will sometimes take away opportunity or add additional opportunity. So you can't just rely on the book. You always have to check the book and then you have to check the emergency regs, which are published online. They also have an app too, to help you uh, muddle through all of this. In addition to all of those regulations, um, this pamphlet also contains costs uh, for fishing licenses. And a lot of people like to complain about how expensive resident fishing licenses are. I buy what's called the Fish Washington license, which allows me to fish freshwater, saltwater, and shellfish. And that costs me about $70. And then I have to get a two pole endorsement, which costs me uh, another 15 bucks. That allows me to run more than one rod. And then you can get all kinds of other endorsements, especially if you're doing like uh, catch record cards for halibut and salmon. Um, or you're doing any kind of crabbing in Puget Sound, they actually have to tag their crabs here in Puget Sound. It's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, this is normal uh, for a lot of the states here in the West. They do require some sort of endorsement for additional opportunities on um, everything. And this includes Idaho too. They also have aquatic invasive species permits and so on. So it does feel like you're always getting nickel and dimed by all these little things every time you go there. So over the past several years, I've had the opportunity to fish in a variety of states, and I've also fished on five different continents. And what I wanted to do with this video was to sort of compare and contrast my experiences with fishing regulations and cost of fishing permits in other countries and other states with Washington State to kind of see what the differences really are. Do we really have it that bad? Um, and yeah, just kind of give my personal take on my experiences with navigating uh, regulations overseas and getting licenses. So I think I'm gonna start with licenses. So one of the things I've noticed is that in general, in the United States, fishing licenses, especially for out-of-staters, are usually really expensive, usually two to three times the amount of what you would pay for an in-state fishing license. Some states in particular, they're really spendy, like Montana is very expensive compared to some of its neighboring states. Um, but in general, they all kind of align with themselves. But what's really interesting to me is that when you go overseas, it really contrasts really markedly with what we have here in the United States. Now, virtually in, in all states in the United States, you're going to have to pay for fishing access within that state. Um, some states have separate saltwater and freshwater licenses. Some just have them combined. Other states that are landlocked don't have to deal with that. They just have their freshwater fishing licenses. But when you go overseas, there's a surprising number of countries that don't require fishing licenses. I went to Thailand. If you're fishing with a rod, no license required. I went to Australia. If you're fishing in saltwater, no license required. This actually makes sense to me because, I mean, in reality, they're not really managing anything in the ocean. They're not pouring any money into it, uh, into their ocean fisheries. So yeah, just let people fish the ocean for free. That makes sense. Um, you know, here in Washington state, uh, you know, a lot of our rockfish 
bottom fish species aren't really managed. They're not releasing hatchery fish into the ocean, hatchery halibut or anything like that. So it does seem kind of silly that we have to pay for it. Now there's a lot of monitoring that goes on to see the health of those fisheries, but largely that's due in response to uh, harvest pressures from commercial fisheries, not from us recreational guys. But saltwater fishing in Australia was free. Uh, recently I went to Japan, to the island of Hokkaido. No fishing licenses were required in freshwater or in saltwater. There were some lakes that were privately managed for specific fisheries that did require daily permits. Um, and those fees were reasonable, usually anywhere from five to 10 US dollars a day to fish. It seemed crazy to me to just be able to just fly into a country, get out and just start fishing without having to have a fishing license. Uh, when I was in South America, Chile did require a fishing license when we were fishing for king salmon and trout but it was $30 for an annual license when we were there, which is far cheaper than what I pay at home for this opportunity. And then there's what really contrasts with the United States, and that is Europe. And Europe is a nightmare when it comes to fishing permits and licenses. Um, so one of the great things about the United States is its scalability. It's a very large country and our states are pretty large, most of them at least. Sorry, Delaware and Rhode Island. But here, when you buy a fishing license in the state of Washington, you can pretty much fish anywhere in this state, aside from some uh, Native American reservations. You pretty much can go anywhere and fish. Whereas in Europe, they have privatized everything. <laughs> and it is a nightmare to navigate and pay for and get permits for. So for instance, when we were in Spain, we fished the Rio Ebro River for Wells Catfish and Xander. When there, we had to buy a special permit just for the Rio Ebro plus the provincial permit. Now these are provinces within these relatively small countries. Spain's about the size of Texas. And these provinces aren't any bigger than some of the counties that I've lived in in the United States. And you have to have the provincial permits and then you have to pay for these different areas that are privately managed called cotes. And yeah, it's very complicated. In fact, when I wanted to go fish for trout, I had to buy, even though I was in the same province, I had to go buy a separate permit from for that specific river system. And then that specific river system had its own uh, regulations as well. So it's very complicated. Right now I'm planning a trip to uh, Southern Sweden to do some fishing and it is a nightmare because you have to basically buy permits for every different lake you're visiting or different section of a river you're visiting because each one is managed and controlled either by some organization or entity or individual and you have to pay that individual permit to fish so if you're somebody like me who wants to bounce from lake to lake to river to river you'll end up spending an arm and a leg it's clear to me that if I was going to travel a lot and fish a lot in Europe, I would be spending many times more of the amount of money that I spend for the same opportunities here in the United States. Now Canada to the north is very similar to us. Um, they just have their provincial permits which give you access to the entire province. Overall, I feel like Washington State kind of falls in the middle here compared to the rest of the world. In the United States, maybe we're among the more expensive uh, places to go fishing, um, but we do also have a huge diversity of fisheries, a lot of them requiring really active management, hatchery programs, and whatnot. So I kind of feel like we're doing okay. I mean, we're not nearly as bad as Europe, but we don't necessarily have free fishing either. So even California, you can fish from some of the uh, uh, ocean piers for free without a fishing license. So they do provide that opportunity. Okay, let's talk about rule complexity. Now, I've already kind of touched on this a little bit within the United States, but it's hard to compare states because they all have their own unique set of fisheries management challenges. And so like to compare Washington state with Kansas isn't really a comparison because the number of fishing opportunities in Kansas are tiny compared to what they are here in Washington state. Um, and if you look at the complexity of the regulations, Oregon's fishing 
pamphlet is equally as long. California's is about twice as long, but they also have way more fisheries in terms of different species. And British Columbia is also equally long and complex. So if you look at all of our immediate neighbors that have both saltwater and freshwater systems that they're managing, they're pretty much the same. And it's even across international boundaries, there's not huge change there in terms of uh, complexity of regulations. Interestingly, looking overseas, um, Hokkaido, which is really similar to uh, the Pacific Northwest in composition of species and the complexity of the issues that it faces, including endangered uh, salmon runs, um, their pamphlet's about 45 pages long. It's very easy to read. They have great interpretive maps for the river systems um, to explain the rules. But how they've made it so simple there is that they've essentially just eliminated salmon fishing in freshwater systems. It's just flat out illegal. You cannot target salmon once they've entered a freshwater river. Um, you can only target them in the saltwater. And that's how they've kept the rules simpler because then they don't have to worry about tinkering with every little tiny river and stream that could potentially hold spawning salmon. They just say you can't fish for salmon there. Um, so yes, you can simplify rules, but the only way that I see to do that is to essentially eliminate opportunity. And I think that's how we ended up with this really complex uh, and lengthy booklets is that we're trying to manage these really complex fisheries. In other countries, it was really hard to find any regulations at all. Uh, in Thailand, it was like really challenging. I couldn't find anything online. Um, so, I mean, I practiced pretty much catch and release the whole time I was there. And in Europe, it's extremely complex because each individual cote or private organization that's managing a specific section of river or body of water uh, has their own set of rules and regulations and it's not always readily available. And so it's for me, like every time I, I am just pulling my hair out every time I'm trying to figure out a, and plan a self-guided fishing trip anywhere in Europe. It's just a nightmare. <laughs> um, us, other parts of the world, Australia's uh, regulations were very simple um, and very easy to understand. So how do I think Washington State falls out compared to other states and other parts of the world? I really feel like we're at a happy medium here. Um, you know, yes, it is expensive and there are other places in the world where you can go and fish for free. But those parts of the world generally don't have the same complexity of fisheries management issues that we have here, nor do they have the higher level of dependence on hatchery programs to produce trout and salmon and steelhead. And the only place that even is analogous to that, the way they got around that was to just close off opportunity, which I would rather have opportunity and more complex regulations. So. There is that trade-off. Also, I feel like there's one major thing that really sets um, our regulations and how we manage and approach fisheries management here in Washington State and in other states is that they're still largely regarded as a public resource that cannot be privatized. Whereas in Europe, they've taken a much different approach where a lot of the fisheries have been privatized. Now, there are bodies of water within a lot of those countries that you can go and fish for free. For instance, when we were fishing the ocean in Catalonia, Spain, they didn't require, like, a there wasn't a privatized, like, sections of the coast. There's just a provincial license, which was fairly affordable. I think it was like $8 a day. And there are lakes even in southern Sweden where you can fish for free. Um, some of their larger lakes are free. You don't have to have a permit. And even some of the canals and such, like in some of the bigger cities, you're allowed to fish for free. But I can show you right here, this is the resource I'm using to plan on these trips. All those little blue pins are individual privatized sections of rivers or bodies of water. And I have to tell you, it's a nightmare. And I would never want anything like that here in the United States because I just appreciate that we still come at fisheries management as a, as a public resource, 
not as a privatized one. And what I really like too about Washington state, and of course all the states are like this, and the provinces in Canada is the scalability. You buy this singular fishing license and allows you to fish anywhere in that state so or province. So that's great. Um, you know, in Europe, that's not the case. You're having to pay for each individual uh, river system or lake. And even in Hokkaido, you know, some of the lakes were public, but some of them were private. I spent more time focusing on the free public lakes than the paid private ones. And some of those lakes that are really large are still controlled by these private entities. So, but you could fish in the rivers and in the ocean for free. So there was that. Anyways, it's really interesting to reflect upon. I, I do feel grateful for um, what we have here, even if it does cost a bit more than in some places. And even if it is a little bit more complex than it is in some places, I still feel like we're getting a better bang for our buck compared to some parts of the world. Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Maybe you've traveled to other parts of the world and fished and you have a different take on it. I'd love to hear in the comments section below. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder.